everybody, it's Dawn and welcome back. And we're going to carry on for a little bit longer with our Art for Crafters series. And again, we're going to be using watercolour. And I've already painted this card in a watercolour technique with my watercolours. And I've set the scene really. Just, it's a very simple scene. There's nothing complicated about this one. But it, this is an A5 card. It just gave me a bit more room to add a little bit of detail. And I've set the scene for our star guest, so to speak. And I'm going to use a bird stamp. Now, he's already on my stamp position. And now you may notice one of the springs has popped out. I've no idea where it was, but I'm hoping it'll still carry on working with three of them. So we're going to just hope for the best. Now, what we're going to do with this, I'm going to use my watercolours. I'm going to be daring here. And use my watercolours to actually add the colour to the stamp. Now, I've got a very dark... I'll bring it over. Yeah, I've got lots of colours here because this is where I've been. I finished my painting for the card a little while ago and I've still got my colours on the palette. And I'm going to use this and that's Burnt Umber. And I'm going to use it fairly thickly. So I'm just going to moisten the brush rather than soak it. And I'm going to pick up quite a thick coating of paint like that. So I'm just going to pick it up like that. So I've got quite a thick coating of paint on my brush. I'm just going to pop it down there. If I move it just over, and then once I've done that, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually paint, as you would with your stamps, I'm going to paint over, whoops, not quite that thick. I'm going to paint over my bird, my stamp of my bird, with my watercolour brown, with my burnt umber. Because it's a nice thick colour. So, and then what we're going to do, I'm going to pop that back in the water just for a minute. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to position him. I'm using a stamp, stamp positioner so that I can actually sit him on my log here. So his feet, with a bit of luck, should touch that log. So let's just push down. And there he is. Now that's not a full stamp, but it's just enough to give us an idea of what we need to do. So let's just move the water and move that into shot so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to wet my brush, pick up some, some more burnt umber, just the same burnt umber. And I'm just going to, actually what I am going to do is get a smaller brush because that's a bit too big. So we'll, use, we'll change to a smaller brush. So I'll just wet the brush very quickly. So we need this quite puddly really, like that. And so we're just going to fill in the detail. I've, he could, I've done him right on the edge of the log really, that doesn't really matter. So once we fill that in, it's going to be lighter. Because it's more watery, it's going to be paler in tone. So you're still going to see all those lovely details coming through. So I'm just going to go around there and just paint up there like that. And we're just going to fill in the shape and the colour of the bird. So it's not any particular species of bird, any bird. It could be any bird. And I meant to put some burnt umber or some, some dark grey, some Payne's grey to fill in the eye, but I didn't. So that's all right, what we'll do. Well, we could, uh, I'll tell you what, just for this once, we'll cheat. I wouldn't normally recommend this, but nor just for this once, we'll cheat. I'm going to use a Sharpie. No, there's no rule that says you can't cheat in watercolour. So we're just going to give him an eye like that. So if all else fails, cheat. And I'm just going to wet my brush again and pick up a bit more of this puddly paint and just shape his wing just a little bit better like that. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just a little bit better. And I'd like that just a little bit thicker, just like that. And I'm going to pick up this colour next to it is yellow ochre. So what I'm going to do with the same small brush, I'm going to pick up an application of yellow ochre. And I'm going to use that to do his beak. So I'm just going, I can still see the lines where the watercolour has printed it. So there you go. There is our little bird 
our watercolour bird. So because we've used our watercolours to use it on the stamp, we've got no outline. We've got no ugly outline, which I really don't like, especially with birds. So there we go. There are our watercolours used to add colour and detail to our acrylic stamps. So I hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful. And when you come back next time, we're going to be sticking with our watercolour. Now, if you do find, incidentally, that you think, oh, God, he looks like he's falling off the edge. That's not really too much of a problem. Because what you can do, because that was yellow ochre as well. And actually, it ha has gone a little bit pale. So what we can do is just pick up some more colour. We're going to just put that over there like that. And bring it round. So... If he does look like he's on the edge, that's not too much of a problem. And, you, and his, his other back leg here, his other leg is coming back. So he's not really totally on the edge. So there we go. But I think that'll do for now. I'm not going to play with it anymore because I'll probably end up spoiling it. And it is a card. It's not just a painting. It is a card. This is, as I said, an A5 card. And it will stand up because I've painted it onto watercolour paper. It will stand up like that. So there we go. There is our beautiful bird in our landscape. And we've used our watercolour paints to add colour and detail to our stamp to add the bird. So I hope you found that useful and enjoyed it. And when you come back next time, I'm going to be using the same painting again. But this time I'm going to be using again watercolour. I'll wash my palette before I come back again, I promise. And I'm going to be using a stencil to add some long tufts of grass, probably just around here and maybe around here. So when you come back next time, you'll see how I do that. So in the meantime, have a great weekend. I'll probably be back Monday now to show you how you use stencil to add details to a, for grass details around here. So have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Stay safe, have fun, and as always, happy crafting. Bye-bye for now.